Hello, my name is Angelina Hardy Maloney, class of 1996, and I am the president of the Alumni Association Board of Directors. It is my privilege to welcome you to the Alumni Awards Ceremony. Today, we'll be honoring the 2020 Distinguished Alumni Award recipient and the 2020 Thomas A. Mannion Distinguished Faculty Award. We will also pay special tribute to the Schenectady chapter of the Alumni Association's 90th anniversary. First, I'd like to introduce Interim President Marsha White for a special message to this year's honorees. We are lifted every day by the spirit of our alumni, more than 46,000 strong. As students, you contributed your talents, creativity, and intellect to our community as you learned and lived from founding values, orientation towards excellence, development of the whole person, building an inclusive community, serving the dear neighbor, and meeting the needs of the times. Then you graduated, started careers, families, or community organizations, and put those values towards everything that you do for the good of those around you. Today, we celebrate those who embody the values of our beloved college, and I would like to acknowledge all of those who would be honored today with my gratitude and admiration. Congratulations to the Schenectady chapter of the St. Rose Alumni Association, which is celebrating its 90th anniversary. You have remained a powerful voice for St. Rose and its alumni for nearly as long as St. Rose has welcomed students through its doors. Thank you for your support, dedication, and service to St. Rose through your volunteer efforts and scholarships for incoming students, you have been one of the most steadfast supporters. Today, we also honor an alum who stands out for how he has lived the St. Rose values in the years since he graduated in 1987. From the orientation towards excellence that led him to start his own computer consulting firm as a fresh graduate of St. Rose, to his work as the U.S. Veterans Administration because he felt it was important to serve those who serve our country, to make the decision to leave the workforce, to care for his parents. Michael D. Normandin reflects the spirit of St. Rose. In addition to hiring St. Rose graduates and interns and serving as a mentor for St. Rose students, Michael established an endowed award titled the Michael D. Normandin Innovative Computing and Technology Award. This award is given out annually to the most promising student in either the computer technology or music industry field of study. A gifted musician with a big heart, Michael says he has always believed in the praise coined by author and motivational speaker Zig Ziglar, who said, you can get anything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. Michael, thank you for how you represent St. Rose in your life and in your community, and congratulations on this award. I would also like to congratulate the recipient of the Thomas A. Mannion Distinguished Faculty Award, Professor Al Sheplow. Professor Sheplow is known by students for being a dynamic and demanding, but always fair member of our faculty. And as a result, he has received numerous faculty awards throughout his career. He gives countless hours to our outstanding mock trial team, where students gain real world skills that assist them in future legal careers or in other fields they may choose. The pride he holds for our students who are admitted to law school each year is underscored by the fact that he remains connected with those alumni as they move on to successful careers. In addition to an orientation towards excellence and dedication to developing the whole person, Professor Shaplow 
gives back to our dear neighbor by training New York State town and village justices and their clerks. Education is vital to a fair and just system. Thank you for all that you do for St. Rose and the community, Professor Chaplow, and congratulations on this award. Thank you to the St. Rose Alumni Association for organizing these awards. We have much to be proud of at St. Rose, as the spirit of our founders lives and breathes in so many ways. From today's honorees, to each one of our alumni, to the new students who will join our community this fall. Our legacy is strong and we will continue transforming lives for the next 100 years. Thanks to all of you. The Distinguished Alumni Award acknowledges a St. Rose alum for demonstrating the excellence the College of St. Rose Education through outstanding accomplishments or significant contributions to society. Distinction must lie in one of the following areas, professional, academic, cultural, service, or creative expression. Selection for the award is based on the quality of achievement, the scope of its impact, and the extent to which it exceeds the nominee's customary professional responsibilities. This year, we are proud to present the award to Michael Normandin, class of 1987. Majoring in computer information systems, in the very first class to offer that major, Michael has led an exceptional career in both the government and private sector. He has mentored, provided internships for, and hired countless St. Rose students over the years, while also endowing an Innovation in Computing and Technology Award to support the students for years to come. For a number of years, Michael has left the workforce to care for his beloved parents, truly living the St. Rose mission in his own life. Before introducing you to Michael, here is just a few of the remarks from his nominations. Michael serves as a shining example of someone who successfully implemented the very course of study learned at St. Rose in his chosen major and minor into a fulfilling, impactful career throughout his life. The common thread of Michael's life is service, helping other people, making a difference to society, and improving the lives of others. And finally, Michael has always gone above and beyond no matter what project, service, organization, or occupation he is a part of. On behalf of the Alumni Association, congratulations, Michael. Greetings, St. Rose faculty, friends, alumni, distinguished guests. I am deeply, deeply grateful and humbled for receiving this award. My first reaction was disbelief. Why me? Aren't there others more deserving than me that would be worthy of this? I always saw these things come up, right? Alumni of the year. And I said, who is, who is the one person I feel that I can nominate that deserves this award more than anybody else? And it came out to be Mike. Without him, I'm not sure I would be me today. Not only has he had a successful career uh, in government, he started his own business after graduating. He's never severed his connection with St. Rose. He's, he's here, he's here for events, he volunteers. He's just been engaged with the college and just been a, a role model for our students. Mike has always kept St. Rose at the center of his personal and professional life. He's extremely proud to be a graduate of the College of St. Rose. He's hired and partnered with graduates of the school. He's collaborated with St. Rose professors outside of the school on business projects. He's actively participated in the Alumni Association, even serving on the board and various committees. Mike treats every St. Rose alumni as a part of his family. On the first day of the semester, I had arrived very early at CSIM uh, for recording engineering. It turned out Mike was on campus to audit some classes. Uh, Mike just so happened uh, to be the next one who walked into the studio that morning, and that's how it all began. His family also has a history with the college. Uh, I remember him telling me that his mother used to teach piano at the college. When I first graduated from high school, I wanted to take a year off and tour the world and be a rock star, be famous and uh, play my drums and enjoy life. Well, my father would have none of that, and he insisted that I go to college. In the end, I'm so glad I listened to him because he was absolutely 100% right. 
my mom had a lot of connections with the music industry here. It was actually my grandmother that had the connection with Sister Jerome Joseph to teach my mom piano. That kind of made going to St. Rose a logical choice. And I actually wound up taking music and computers when I came to St. Rose. I first met Mike Norman in my first computer class here at St. Rose. I didn't know quite what I wanted to do. And they had this newfangled ma uh, major called Computer Information Systems. And we were like the first group to do it. But one day I'm in my first computer class, and there was Mike sitting there, and we got to talking. And, you know, we realized we had a lot in common, and I said to him, I said, what are you going to do now? He goes, I want to come out room, have a bite to eat. And I said, all right, I'll go with you. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. I was a computer information systems major. Actually, the first batch of computer information systems majors that the college ever had. And that's what I proceeded to do for the next 30 or so years of my life. Computers was my career, and music was my hobby and my passion. I was the College of St. Rose graduate that he hired right out of school to work at his computer consulting firm, Computers Complete. Michael opened the door of the business world for me, and whether he knows it or not, he helped shape my career tra trajectory, and that's why I am where I am today. When I met Michael, I was the department chair for the computer science department, and he had just established an award for outstanding students that was to be given out every single year. You see a lot of students um, that are interested in pursuing one career, and it's nice to be able to motivate them to have a second option or to have another interest or to branch out. And Mike's the perfect example of that. As someone who is also a musician and in the world of IT, we've crossed paths many times since my time at St. Rose. Uh, during my time as a student, I was honored to accept the Michael D. Normandin Innovative Technology Award, uh, which further connected us. A major selling point of coming to St. Rose was the small classroom sizes. The teachers always were approachable and you always felt like they were in your corner to help you succeed. And that gave me a lot of confidence uh, coming out of here into the real world. My favorite memory while at St. Rose probably was all the recording sessions that I had with uh, Sister Mary Ann and the Saints and Sinners Sound Studio. That was always fun because as a computer major, you're in a computer lab all the time and you're working on programming. And music was always like the alter ego, if you will. So it's like, all right, let's get all the, the formal stuff done and let's go play in the studio. Mike's a very hard worker. He did the uh, Michael Normandin Scholarship here at St. Rose, endowment for computers and, and music. He started his own business at a very young age. He left a very good job to take care of his parents. I have nothing but the utmost respect in the world for him. I nominated him because he's the best guy I know. I would certainly thank him from the bottom of my heart for all the years of friendship, for all the camaraderie, for all the advice, and for all that he is. He deserves this award. He has really done a lot to make all of us St. Rose graduates proud of him and what he's done to represent our school. I love you, brother, I miss you, and cannot wait to see you in person, and then we can celebrate this award and all our other life events. He's always been proud to call St. Rose's home. He truly loves St. Rose and has remained very close to the college over the years. Mike, I'm so happy for you. Uh, I can't think of a better, a more deserving person than you for this award. Uh, I wish we could all be there to celebrate this special time with you but we'll have to make up for it sometime. So I tell him it's very well earned, a long time coming, and I'm glad that in 2021, it's almost 35 years after he graduated, that we have a formal way of saying thank you for all you've done over the last 35 years. A common theme throughout my life, whether it's been in computers, technology, even family, whatever I've been involved with, is to always try to give people hope and confidence in themselves that they can do something something maybe they never even thought they could do. That's what makes me happy, helping those people get through those times and supporting them. In giving is how you receive. I get an adrenaline rush uh, every time I come onto campus because it just reminds me back in those early days. The buildings changed, you know, some of the names changed, the faces changed or whatever, but I feel like you're coming home. It's like you're home away from home. Whether it's in business, music, technology, 
St. Rose has always given me the confidence to say I can do this. And for that, I'll always be grateful. So thank you, St. Rose. The Thomas A. Mannion Distinguished Faculty Award was established in honor of former St. Rose President Thomas A. Mannion. This award is presented to an eligible faculty member in recognition of excellence in teaching, outstanding professional accomplishment, and concern for the students demonstrated by influencing their personal and professional lives. As a representative of the College of St. Rose Alumni Association, it's my honor to present the Thomas A. Mannion Distinguished Faculty Award to Al Chaplot. In addition to a full course load, he is the chair of the Department of Sociology and Criminal Justice, the pre-law advisor, and has mentored many of his students successfully to prepare for law school admissions. He's also the advisor for the intercollegiate mock trial, and that's just the work he does at St. Rose. I'd like to share a few of the remarks from the alumni. I just passed the bar. I wouldn't be the attorney I am without his guidance, and I'm forever grateful for having him as a mentor. I'm so glad I had Professor Chaplot. I had a mock law class today and knew exactly how to brief the case and what the professor was asking when all the other students were scrambling all over the place. I sincerely appreciate how much effort you put into teaching us, and because of you, I actually feel prepared for law school. And finally, one comment that came from multiple alumni. Thank you for believing in me, both inside and outside of the classroom. My name is Alfred Chaplow, Al, they call me Al. I came to St. Rose in 2009, 2010 school year. So this is, I think, going into my 10th or 11th year here at the college. I came as a professor of criminal justice, and I'm now an associate professor of criminal justice, and also work with the pre-law program, and adjunct to that, the National Collegiate Mock Trial Team, which we're seated right here in the courtroom. I graduated law school, and I was fortunate enough to get what's called a clerkship, which is um, to be a judge's lawyer for a couple of years. And I, I did that for a couple of years, and then I decided that what I really wanted to do was to work as a prosecutor. I landed a job with the Schenectady County District Attorney's Office. And then I moved on to, the, uh, to be an assistant attorney general in, in Albany. DA Robert Carney decided to run for district attorney uh, in Schenectady County. So I worked on his campaign, and he won election, and he shows up at my door at two in the morning, and he says, um, I need a chief assistant. Uh, you know, will you do it? So I came back to the Scanty County District Attorney's Office. I was chief assistant district attorney for 18 years. But then it, there, I, I reached a point where you just kind of feel it's time for a change. It's time to let somebody new kind of, kind of do it. I spent a couple of years getting my graduate degrees. And I taught for a few years at another institution. I just happened to see that uh, there was an opening at St. Rose and I thought, you know, I'll just see. One thing led to another, and, and they offered me a position, and that's why I'm sitting here. <laughs> I mean, most of the things that I remember are sitting back in the courtroom in these competitions and seeing these kids see the light go on, see, see, see them sparkle. There are approximately 250 universities and colleges throughout the United States that belong to the American Mock Trial Association. Every year, that association puts out a case. Members conduct invitational tournaments where this case is tried among the colleges. The college attends two or three invitationals. We've conducted our own invitationals. We do our MLK in January just before the national competition usually starts around the second week in February. And then we go to the national competition. We, we, we compete at, at the national level. Here in the courtroom, we have a, two plaques that have the names of some of the students who have received awards either on the national regional level or on the national competition level. It's a very aggressive program. It takes a 
great deal of time and effort. And it's been fairly successful over the years. Um, we now have, I think, upwards of a dozen students who have gone to law school and, and, and are either in law school or graduating from law school or have graduated a few years ago that have come out of the mock trial program. I don't think of what I have done here at the college as being anything necessarily special. I think that's what you should do if you're here at the college. I just think it's important to have a, a connection outside of the college to both the students, particularly to the alumni. You often hear people say, you know, uh, alumni are the past of the college. They really are the future of the college. Our National Collegiate Mock Trial Team is named the Honorable Loretta Prescott uh, Mock Trial Team. Judge Prescott is a 1970 graduate of the college. It was her energy, it was her ambition that brought this courtroom about, but, but it also directly brought about the dozens of students who are now on their way to practicing law or practicing law, that might never have happened were it not for an alumni to come back and, and put the, the seeds together. I don't ever teach anybody. If I do a really good job, I set up the atmosphere that allows them to learn. Teaching, you know, people think it's so, so directive. It's, it's not directive. It's inspiring them. It's getting them to have an imagination. If my students say, you know, you never answer a question, we never know what you think. And I think, yes, that's exactly what I want. It's not about what I think. It's not about how I see something. It's how do you come around to coming to your opinion about something and can you defend it? Can you feel comfortable with it? It's, it's, not, it's not about me, it's about them. I'm of two minds when it comes to awards. It's wonderful to get them and I'm, I'm very proud to, to, to have been nominated and to get the award. In one sense, I'm just doing my job. Those people who have gone on that are the, that are the heroes, it's their success that's the story, not me. That, that's where the real story is. Thank you, Professor Shaplo, on behalf of the Alumni Association and the entire St. Rose community. Thank you for all you have done for our alumni and all you continue to do for our students. Congratulations. There are currently two active chapters of the Alumni Association. The Schenectady chapter is celebrating its 90th anniversary. From scholarships to incoming students to volunteering both at the college and in their own community, they have made a mark on the world. In this video, you'll hear from the chapter historian, Sharon Maneri, class of 64 and graduate class of 69. Enjoy this look back on the Schenectady chapter's first 90 years. I would like to share the history of the Schenectady chapter of the St. Rose Alumni Association, which actually started out as the Schenectady Graduate Club in 1930. It was started by a member of the very first graduating class, Winifred McGowan. She actually also composed the alma mater. Winifred started the chapter in 1930 with uh, Andy Carey, who was in the same class but was from Albany, and uh, Margaret Welch Goldsmith, who was class of 27, who actually lived in Vermont but moved into the Schenectady area. So they were the three founders. And as more graduated from St. Rose, it finally grew. They had teas to welcome prospective students. They would have them for seniors in the high schools in Schenectady. Dues started at $2 and went up to $5, and then in the late 80s went to 10, which they are still at today. The purpose was to further interest in the college, to raise money for the college for their building funds, and also provide for the alumni a gathering area for social activities and also enrichment and friendship. What does being a member of the Schenectady chapter mean to me? Uh, I have met such wonderful people from all ages through the Schenectady chapter. They've become friends, uh, people that we enjoy doing things with. They have been there when, uh, for each other when things are needed and it has brought us closer to the college. We're very involved in the community. 
In 1961, uh, Ann Carl was president, class of 44. She suggested that we do volunteer work at St. Clair's Hospital. And Ann Carl, who f started it, ended uh, her term with us just up in maybe about five years ago uh, as chair of the uh, St. Clair's Volunteers. After St. Clair's uh, closed the gift shop, we found the uh, Dominican Retreat and Conference Center. In, uh, it's right on Route 7 in Niskiuna. And there are about 10 or 11 of us that go five times a year to help with their mailings. And <laughs> really, we get as much out of it as they get from us as well. These are things that we do with the Schenectady chapter. We have a membership meeting in September. We usually have someone come from the college to speak. And at Christmas, we do a Christmas dinner. We go to Mass at one of the churches. This, the last one we had was at St. Madeline Sophie. Back in uh, 2001, uh, Dr. Sullivan was the chair of the Walk to Cure Diabetes. We formed our own little separate group as part of the big group and uh, marched and, and raised quite a bit of money for that as well. In honor of Mother Rose of Lima, one of the founding faculty of the College of St. Rose, who was Dean of Foreign Languages and became president, uh, the chapter decided to present a language award to each of the nine high schools in the Schenectady area. In the late 60s, uh, we gave money and then a $50 savings bond, and eventually we, as we do today, $100 is given to each of the nine schools, and it's presented on the awards night at those schools, hopefully by a St. Rose alum. On the 60th anniversary of the first graduating class, we decided to honor Winifred McGowan Quinn by giving an award in memory of her son, J. Raymond Quinn, Jr. Since then, we have given 44 awards, and we select based on their school involvement and their community involvement. Many of them went on to become involved at the college. On the national board, they came and joined our chapter, and it's been a, a wonderful way to connect and keep the college's name in front of uh, the people in Schenectady. My name is Ayanna Ford. I am in St. Rose's class of 2024. My major is in Childhood and Special Education, and I am 2020's recipient of the J. Raymond Quinn Award. Winning the award really meant a lot to me, and I found it touching to be recognized for my experience of transitioning from a student to an educator in the world where education is forever being changed. So thank you again. Um, unfortunately, I can't be with you guys today, but I did want to end the video by saying happy anniversary to the Schenectady chapter. I'm just so happy to be here as part of it. I, I came in 1960, so it's 60, 61 years now. I've loved the college. Uh, I think it has grown in many, many ways. I love the, the faculty, the staff. The alumni, everybody have been just wonderful. The small family feel, that's one of the main things that has kept it going. They know who you are, you feel like you belong, and they have opened. I'm just so happy to be here as part of it. I, I came in 1960, so it's 60, 61 years now. I've loved the college. Uh, I think it has grown in many, many ways. I love the, the faculty, the staff, the alumni, everybody have been just wonderful. The small family feel, that's one of the main things that has kept it going. They know who you are, you feel like you belong, and they have opened it up in so many ways. As society has changed, the college has moved right along with it. Making sure that the... These are our golden roses. Uh, in 1989, the National Alumni Association uh, decided to honor the 50-year graduates of the college and they were inducted into what is called the Golden Rose Society. One thing that has kept our chapter going is the fact that we have loyal people. They get involved and they stay involved. They don't go away. They're making sure that the chapter continues to thrive in the community and at the college, still helping the alma mater by giving of time and talent.
as long as I'm able and the Schenectady chapter is going to continue and uh, as long as the college and even beyond as alumni we will be strong on to infinity with our love and support of the College of St. Rose. Thank you for joining us today. We can't wait to celebrate in person with you next time.